Welcome to my channel. I'm Mary Day, and today I wanted to share my story with severe environmental allergies, oral allergy syndrome, and chronic hives. Now, before we begin, I just want to say that I am not a doctor. I don't understand all the ins and outs of allergies and the human body and all that mess. <laughs> All I really understand is my own story, my own experience, and what my allergists have told me about me. <laughs> Everybody's story is going to look different. Everybody's experience will be different. I mean, within the diagnostic criteria. But no two people are gonna have the exact same story. So my goal today is really just to share what my story is. I am going to put some links to some videos in the description that explain things like allergic rhinitis, hay fever, and how exactly Zolair shots work. And if you're interested in those topics, you should go check out those videos because they can explain it a lot better than I can. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Now, let's get into it. This is my allergy story. I can remember my tongue itching ever since I was like really little. I have this distinct memory of asking my dad if it was normal for people's tongues to itch and him simply replying, no. So I didn't really bring it up again after that. As a kid, you know, it never felt dangerous, just uncomfortable. And who wants to be the weird kid, you know? After my family moved, I began to bite my tongue pretty much raw. I remember a dentist confronting me about it when I was like 10 years old. I was embarrassed, so I lied, and I said I did not bite my tongue. When I was in middle school, I turned to Dr. Google and read that sometimes dehydration can cause your tongue to itch. I don't know, I was 12. So whenever my tongue got itchy, I would just chug a lot of water. During high school, my allergies pretty much subsided, and I didn't really give it a second thought. During my junior year of college, I started getting burning, stinging rashes on my arms and legs. The palms of my hands would swell and it felt like when you fell off your bike as a kid and you scraped your hand it stung like that also my face began to swell and get really red and very hot in 2017 i was referred to an allergist who oddly enough did not do any allergy testing so i was diagnosed with idiopathic angioedema and urticaria which is a fancy way of saying chronic hives and swelling with no known cause. I was prescribed Zyrtec one time daily and after six months, I noticed the Zyrtec was helping, but I still wasn't 100%. So from there, my allergist told me to take Zyrtec two times a day and also prescribed a non-drowsy antihistamine to take instead of Benadryl. Allergy meds like Zyrtex are preventative. So when I had breakout hives, I needed something that would treat them without making me unconscious and useless like Benadryl does. I was also advised to put ice on the hives because it numbs the area and reduces swelling. I would also use aloe vera oil and that seemed to help a lot. This strategy worked well for me for a while and I was doing great. I was eventually able to go back down to only one Zyrtec a day. My allergist said that chronic hives in young adults is pretty common and that he didn't see my hives as an issue that would be chronic as most bouts of hives resolve themselves in six months to a year. Then in 2018, I stepped on a sewing needle and had to have it removed. The night it was removed, my bottom lip became swollen and red and painful. The podiatrist who took the needle out of my foot gave me his number and told me to text him if anything happened. So I texted him a picture of my lip and he advised me to take Benadryl and after that the swelling went down and I was totally fine. I mean my foot wasn't but my lip was. In 2019 my little family moved to Colorado and I have experienced terrible hives since day one of being here. I started seeing my current local allergist who performed a skin prick test. The results of this test show that I'm severely allergic to every kind of grass they tested for. They test by pricking your skin with a little bit of the allergen and then measuring how big the hive is. My antihistamines were upped to two times a day again, and now I knew to avoid grass, to keep my windows closed, and to wash myself and my pup off after coming in from the outside. Between that appointment and my next checkup appointment, I developed bad hay fever that caused sinus pain, congestion, nosebleeds, and headaches every single night, regardless of the precautions that I took. 
Also during this time, I had an IUD placed with no pain meds. The night after, right on cue, my hand turned red, became a bit swollen, and it started to burn. I was staying with a good friend who found some allergy cream, some aloe oil, an ice pack, and an ace bandage. I wrapped it and kept the ice on it, but it stayed inflamed and painful all night. At my next appointment, I explained what had been going on with my reaction to stress, and my allergist explained that the endocrine system is all connected, so if I'm already always reacting to grass, other triggers that are not grass pollen like stress, and I'm talking physical and emotional stress, can also cause face, mouth, and body swelling. It made a lot more sense when my allergist said it, but I'm doing the best I can. Usually the next step in treatment is to try a medication called prednisone, but I can't take it because I'm pre-glaucomic and it can increase pressure in the eyes. At this point in trying antihistamines and still not feeling better, my allergist prescribed Zoller injections. After the first set of shots, I woke up feeling it human again. I get Zoller for chronic hives technically, but it still helps immensely with preventing hay fever. I went a couple months without getting a shot while insurance switched me to an infusion center as opposed to the doctor's office, and boy, once the shot wore off, my allergies came back with a vengeance. I recently got my second set of shots, and it has helped me a lot, but not as much as the first time. Now, don't get me wrong, I feel drastically better, but I still get hives and an itchy tongue, but I don't get hay fever nearly as bad or as often as I used to. The Zoller injections don't make me magically no longer allergic to grass. Zoller means I can go on a hike once, maybe twice a week, wearing an allergy mask, bathing my dog before we come home, taking a shower right after we get home, putting my clothes straight into the washer, and taking other precautions. I love Colorado and I couldn't imagine moving anywhere else. So as far as diagnoses go, I have a severe allergy to every grass tested. I have chronic urticaria and angioedema and oral allergy syndrome. As far as treatment goes, I need to avoid raw fruits and vegetables, although cooked is fine. I need to stay inside, keep my windows closed, and wear a mask when I'm outside. Ice and heat packs, aloe, and pain cream are really good for hives. TENS unit is good for headaches, and antibiotic cream for when I scratch too much. I take preventative and reactionary antihistamines, I get Zoller injections, and of course I have my service dog, Esther. Now, I don't have a service dog for allergies, and to be honest, I probably wouldn't have considered adding a dog to the mix if I had known about my environmental allergies, but thankfully Esther is not like overly floofy and is pretty easy to clean. When we're out, I use a chuck it stick with a drop it command so that I don't ever have to touch the ball. Before we come home from our adventures outside, Esther gets a bath at our local Pet Supplies Plus. They offer five dog washes for $25, which is not only a steal, but extremely helpful for us. Her vet said that she could have baths up to two times a week as long as we use a hydrating oatmeal-based shampoo. We take her to off-leash hiking trails where she can run in the grass and play with the other grassy pups, so a bath really is necessary before she can come home. Esther is not an allergy alert dog. Obviously, she can't alert me to the presence of grass because it's everywhere. However, she can respond once I react. I get really bad sinus pain and headaches, so her mobility tests come in handy. Esther can retrieve items like medications, guide me to my boyfriend, close doors, turn off lights, and so much more. I have not taught her to interrupt things like scratching because she's not at my hip 24-7 and the girl values her sleep, so I just rely on other coping mechanisms to resist scratching the hives. Esther Girl doesn't come to the allergist with me because there's a relatively high amount of people with dog allergies there, but she does come with me to the infusion center where I get my injections. My allergies really affect me. I won't sugarcoat it. It really sucks. My allergies are year-round, so I can never really enjoy outdoor activities. And because of the pandemic, I can't even really leave my house because outdoor activities are the only activities recommended right now. I'm naturally an indoor person, so my allergies haven't been detrimental to my lifestyle, 
but I'm still a person who needs fresh air, sunlight, and a spiritual connection to nature. It puts a bit of strain on my relationships because the people around me want to go do fun outdoor activities like hiking and camping. I mean, we live in Colorado for Christ's sake. Surprisingly, being inside my apartment all the time hasn't taken as much of a toll on my mental health as you'd expect. What has taken the most toll on my mental health was the amount of pain I was in every day pre-Zolaire. Now on the shots, my allergies are simply uncomfortable as opposed to downright miserable. I still experience a lot of anxiety around going outside. I know my allergies aren't life-threatening, but it's difficult knowing how painful exposure to grass is. Not gonna lie, walking the line between human needs and avoiding allergens is really hard. I am allergic to grass. My immune system launches an attack every single time I come into contact with the outside, and it really hurts. Just because I'm on antihistamines and Zolaire, that doesn't mean I can touch grass or camp or go to the park or wrestle with my pup in the grass. Every outing requires extra attention. Will I have to give my dog a bath before we come home? Did I pack my medicine? How's the weather today? I have to plan to make sure I'm not up creek without a paddle. Planning all these things and then also having to resist scratching, it takes up a lot of mental energy and that's annoying. It's mental space that I could be putting towards something better. All that being said, my life is not bad by any means. I have so many people that love me and a family that supports me unconditionally. I have access to treatments that have been life-changing. While stuck inside, I've started selling artwork and became interested in making YouTube videos again. I love movies, especially horror movies, video games, video calls with my friends, and dancing around to music. My allergies are a big part of my life, but there's a lot to life that doesn't involve grass. Well, thank you for listening to my story. It's been pretty therapeutic for me to make this video. If you've suffered from allergies or hay fever or anything like that, please leave a comment down below. Allergies are way more common than people think. If you are currently struggling, no, there's a lot of non-invasive options to feel better that really do work. A ton of work went into this video, so please show some love, like, and subscribe. I hope you have a great allergy-free night.